justice for all. All right, and we're going to try and make this meeting as efficient as it needs to be so we can all get back to our families. So we're going to move straight into item number three, which is our discussion items. Uh, Mrs. Vernon? Yes, uh, I believe at previous board meetings we had discussed a donation of the Allison playground equipment that we no longer use. And uh, we have gotten a request from a city council person to donate it and in honor of Lisa Tanner. So I would like the board to approve us donating that in her memory. And I believe they are going to uh, move it to a park. That is fantastic. So I know one of the big things in the past that has always been an issue with donating this playground equipment has been um, once you tear it down, when you put it back up, you know, is it insurable? And I have been told that the city has gotten the green light to have it reassembled and still be used for its intended purpose, which I think is fantastic. Do we know where it's going to be sent yet? Um, I think it's going to be sent to the playground area above or at the top of Shea Stadium. That would be amazing. That playground has been needing a facelift for a while. I'm, I'm not entirely positive of that, but I think that's kind of where their pick is to put that equipment. But that's up to city council to decide where that goes. Okay, good. Well, this is wonderful because before I think people just wanted pieces of the equipment. This way the entire place set's being donated. Yes, that's fantastic. So next week you'll see them on the agenda as a um, disposal of a capital asset and the purpose will be to donate it to the city. Okay. You'll formally approve it that way. <clears throat> okay, and, and that'll be it. under your? It, yes. Okay. Yeah, capital asset disposal. Okay, perfect. I'd just like to say thank you to City Council, especially to donate it in honor of Ms. Tanner. Fantastic. Anybody else have any comments? If that if that is where it's going at the playground at Shea, I think that's quite fitting. I, I do too. Because yeah. Lisa spent so much time there. Yeah, that was like her second, third home. Yes. Yeah. All right, so we're going to move right on to um, Section 4, which is the Education Committee. Um, Alice Rerica. Okay, we have some our parent teacher conferences set up for next school year. Do you want me to read through them? Uh, just the dates? Uh, Monday, November 2nd, Thursday, November 5th, Monday, February 8th, and Thursday, February 11th. That's for the elementary. Okay. And then there's high school will be Thursday, September 7th, Thursday, November 5th, Thursday, January 14th, and Thursday, February 11th. I presume that's also for the middle school? It doesn't say. We so the high school would collect. include the middle school as well? No, the middle school needs to submit theirs. Oh, so they haven't okay. submitted theirs yet? That's correct. Okay, so this is just for the elementary and just for the high school? Yes. All right, perfect. Anybody have any comments or concerns about those dates? No? Wonderful. So we're going to move on to section number five, which is personnel. Uh, Mrs. Vernon? Yes, unfortunately, we have a resolution before the board tonight to suspend certificated staff contracts in accordance with applicable reduction in force provisions of the collective bargaining agreements. We do need to right size the district. So a number of our first year teachers who were hired uh, last August, we overhired and we do need to right size our district. So their names are appearing before you as part of our reduction in force. Um, these are um, wonderful individuals who were great teachers this year, but unfortunately um, we do have to let them go and we wish them well in their future endeavors. So that is um, what is in 5.01. Would you like me to re move forward with 5.02? Yes. If there's any, if there aren't any more questions about the reduction in force. Then there's also some resignations from some of our newer teachers who are um, going elsewhere or not returning from leave. So that's what's in section 5.02.
Then, um, unfortunately, also, we have, um, but these are yearly non-renewals, and it's not related to the current coronavirus situation or anything. Um, my understanding is these AFSCME individuals, who many are part-time individuals, yearly are non-renewed. So this is standard operating procedure. So we have a lot of our educational aides and our student assistant aides in this category. And there's about 50 of them. They all belong to Ask Me Local uh, 3136A. Then, in addition to that, this is also happens every year, we have non-renewals for our avenues for success that's our 21st century grant, and these are all the before and after school and club advisors who work in the Avenues for Success program who are also non-renewed yearly and then called back as needed the following year. And then we also have non-renewal of classified subs who sub for these individuals who were non-renewing, we also non-renew the subs. So that is what is in 5.02. It's the, non, the typical yearly non-renewals of staff. Then this is a positive note in the recommendations. We actually have a proposal from our AD to um, have a girls wrestling team for the 2020-21 school year. So that is positive, we're adding there. Again, um, we're sorry to lose a number of these individuals, but I'm sure they will do quite well in their future careers. Or if openings occur, we would love to have them back. Does anybody have any comments? regarding our employment decisions. So I, I just want to say that um, between the, um, the, the rifts and the resignations, so, so we're reducing our teaching staff by about 14 people, which is approximately about 10% of, of our workforce. Um, now, as of right now, we're not hiring any additional teachers at this point. Um, so we're just going to try and shift our district to to counteract those those losses. So we're not bringing anybody on in addition um, and we're losing or we're, we're, we're downsizing our staff by about approximately 10%. And this is very much needed. If you look at our five-year forecast, um, you know, we have to right size the ship and we have to do it quickly Otherwise, we're going to put ourselves in a really bad spot in the next couple of years. Um, the non-renewals of, of all the aides and, the, um, and, and those people, I mean, for those who are newer to the board, this is something that happens every year. So we do the non-renewals. A lot of these people have the opportunity to withhold 20% of their pay during the school year. So that way they'll continue to receive a paycheck through the summer. And more than likely, 95% of these people will be rehired back in August. And that's just the process of how this has gone on for years. And I think it's worked out really well for us. And so we're just continuing that process. And then all I can say for the, um, the addition of girls wrestling is that is fantastic. I'm all for it. If we have the girls that are interested and the state of Ohio is actually putting together all girls tournaments and they just held an all girls state tournament this past year, which we had one participate in and did very well. I think this is fantastic. I'm looking forward to that for next year. And just saying we've held uh, competitions here, especially for wrestling in this gym. It'd be really cool to put our name in the hat to uh, host uh, a all girls wrestling meet right here in Norwood. I think that's fantastic. I love it. All right, any other comments regarding employment? Uh, Brandon, now this is the thing that we always did every year where we fire, rehire, that Scott always found enjoyable because he had a family member. He's like, I can always fire him, but I can't rehire him. You have a family member in that list as well, so you will be abstaining from the rehire process, correct? I do it every year. I abstain from the rehire process. I don't participate in that. Correct. I, I will vote for the non-renewal, but I won't 
vote for the rehire. Yeah, that is correct. Any other comments? All right, moving on, we have our policy committee. Uh, Ms. David Cole. Thank you, Mr. President. So um, we have one new policy. This is a policy um, enabling electronic signatures. So we will be um, asking you next week when we um, have our board meeting, you will be, um, I will be making a motion to um, approve waiving the second reading of this. So hopefully we can just do both readings next week and get this approved. Um, so this electronic signature will just obviously allow for much easier approval of, of documents and things like that. So thank you. We'll have that on there next week. And this will apply for us to be able to sign things as well as for our families to submit paperwork to the district, correct? I think it's for everybody, correct? Is it right. for use across the district? Yes. Mm -hmm. So also the second attachment there shows um, some things like with purchasing, um, communications, which I think you're touching on, and construction too. So our superintendent and treasurer will be able to, to approve things much quicker. That's great. This policy, especially in these days where everything's being done remotely, yeah. right? It, it would be very valuable, right? So that's why we want to get this approved in one, <coughs> one shot. Does anybody have any issues mm -hmm. with suspending our normal rules and having both readings and approving the policy at one meeting? No, I think this is very needed, especially with what's going on now. We have parents who are feeling very insecure about what will happen next year and we can't have them come in for enrollment and whatever and this will really help. I completely agree. I couldn't I couldn't concur more. I think if there's any time that an emergency should be called to make a policy change. I mean this this is the definition of of, of what that should be. And this is something that we as a body never ever do. And and so, you know, I'm completely okay with, with doing this. So to make sure that we get this policy enacted um, as quickly as possible to benefit the, the the business from moving forward. Right. Yeah. We appreciate that. It'll help. It'll help us in the office a great deal. And the guidelines are based pretty generally, so that I can modify them as more things come on. We can add to the guidelines. Okay. And once we approve this after next week, so that we can make these changes, um, I hope to make a post public so that folks know how to reach out to us and sign these documents um, and there is someone still available at the office if they need to request documents be mailed to their home if they don't have a printer access or computer access they're always welcome to mail them back as well but um, you know as soon as we pass this we'll be able to leave those links available for you and we'll share them with you and I believe new guidance around enrollment was posted to our website just this afternoon Fantastic. Um, we do have a section for building and grounds, but I don't think anything's on it for this month. I would just like to say thank you so much to our building care team. Um, I came in today and the lawn was freshly mowed. Work is still being done here to care for the building and the people that are doing that work, uh, they're doing it in quiet and behind the scenes and I just want to say thank you to all of them. Yes. I agree. Our, our maintenance staff truly are wonderful and they're keeping our buildings up during this difficult time. They're keeping it air conditioned or heated and cutting the grass and keeping them really looking wonderful. Mm -hmm. So a big thank you to our maintenance staff. I concur. All right, so now we're gonna move on to section eight of our agenda, which is the finance committee. Uh, Mrs. Camphouse. Thank you, Mr. President. The CFO report is attached to the agenda for your review. The month of March, while okay for financials, included a drastic cut in interest rates by the Federal Reserve and the governor are closing school districts for an untold period of time due to the COVID-19 virus. So it seems weird to be saying that financials were okay. Our March revenue came in about 200,000 higher than estimated for the general fund and we're seeing savings on the budget side. Our savings will be somewhat increased due to the closure of school. Our general fund cash balance was $12,648,000, which is almost exactly where it was last year at the end of March. Our month and financial reports are attached for your review. Also, you will note 
the new format due to our new accounting software. So your reports will look just a little different. The Century Change Order Spreadsheet is attached for your review and approval next week also. Going to the agenda, 8.02 is our appropriation resolution. This was routine approval of our budget for the current year. 8.03, Plains Moving Quote. These quotes are to move our elementary equipment, um, teacher equipment and student desks and everything that's in the building from the modulars back to Sharpsburg Elementary and from Norwood View to the East Wing at the middle school. We've worked with Plains before and value their work. 8.04, establish an escrow account. This just gives me permission to open another account, uh, this time for Graybach construction for the Norwood View renovation project. Mm -hmm. 8.05, builder's risk insurance. This covers the district during the renovation project period of time at view. 8.06, notice of commencement. This document alerts both the public, subcontractors, and other general contractors that we have accepted a bid and are moving forward with, with views renovation project. 8.07, resolution declaring it ne necessary to substitute a levy. In November of 2011, the voters of Norwood approved an emergency levy to support the district. That levy expires in 2021. This resolution has language that will replace the emergency levy for the same amount of money on an ongoing basis. I think it's really important for our taxpayers to know that we are not asking for more money at this time, but for them just to continue the levy that they passed 10 years ago. Our state funding has changed in that 10 year period of time that requires us to continue the emergency levy permanently. We are good stewards of our taxpayers money. We are right sizing our staffing levels now so that we don't have to ask for more revenue, just asking them to continue the tax revenue we currently receive. This resolution wants to prove next week will go to the Hamilton County Auditor's Office. The Auditor's Office will then return a document for Norwood Board of Education to approve in May. After that final document is approved by the board, we officially are on the ballot for November for a substitute levy to replace the old emergency levy for the same exact amount of tax revenue. Is there anything else that anybody wanted to talk about or mention about the tax, um, the substitute levy. So I, I do, I just want to, you know, I think it's important for people to realize that in 2011, when this original emergency levy was enacted and, vo and passed by the voters, um, at that time, the state had a revenue source for local school districts called the POPT tax. And that tax revenue stream, um, as of three or four years ago, was three, almost three and a half million dollars just for our local district. And at that time, the state decided to eliminate that revenue source and not replace it with anything else. So essentially, and they phased that out over time, I think was it this year we're getting like fifty thousand dollars or next year's fifty thousand next year so so in, in the span of a span of three or four years we have gone from a revenue source from the state of you know over three million dollars to next year we'll receive fifty thousand dollars and then after that it'll be nothing it'll be completely gone away and in that time we have not asked for any additional money we have figured out how to live within our means so you know the substitute levy that you know, we're asking just to keep on the books I mean it's not any new additional taxes Correct. we've had revenue sources from the state taken away from the district and we've still managed to maintain our, our excellence here within our own standards and and I, I think it's fantastic but I just want everybody to re recognize and to realize that you know the state has pulled back revenue sources and we have not gone to ask for any additional. So I, I think it's, I think it's, I agree with the move forward with the substitute levy in light of what the state has done for local districts. Does anybody have anything else that they want to add? 
I agree. Okay. That's it. <laughs> I right. agree. We need it, and it's not raising taxes. It's just saying, let's keep the status quo. So that's right. I hope people support us. <clears throat> All right. Is there any other items on the agenda that we want to discuss or any new business that we want to mention or bring up at this time? Well, I'd like to mention to assure everyone that instruction is continuing in uh, Norwood schools during this very, very difficult period. Mm -hmm. You know, our teachers are reaching out to parents through Google Meet, email, streaming videos, and last Friday our really, really creative teachers were featured on Channel 9 at 4 o'clock where they had them dressing up and doing all kinds of lessons, which was really great that we were featured. I want everyone to know that our second set of K-6 to packets are available for pickup. We started passing them out yesterday. In addition, we uh, distributed 700 grab-and-go lunches, so it was a busy day yesterday. But anyone who has not picked up their K-6 to packet can pick it up on Wednesday and Friday of this week. In addition, we're making appointments for parents to pick up Chromebooks to take home because our, at this point, our K-6 to students do need their Chromebooks. So, so far we've had 600 requests. And then uh, when I was on the phone with uh, board member uh, Rayburn today, she had a fabulous idea. If we can't have in-person summer school, we're thinking since our students have Chromebooks this summer, we will do some remo remote summer school lessons because students slide back during the summer anyway and forget some of the lessons they've been taught. And considering it's been difficult the, the, and they've already lost a lot of instruction, we really want to uh, prevent that summer slide. So we're going to look at the teachers who've done a fabulous job during remote, doing the remote learning and ask them would you do a remote summer school if that's the position we end up in in June? Fantastic. I, I think that's a great idea. I so mean, thank you, yeah, Sally. Thank that, you. Was, that was a wonderful <laughs> idea. Anybody have anything else they want to add? I was going to ask, are there updates on prom or graduation? We do get a lot of questions. Uh, yes, the aquarium has canceled um, the uh, May 8th, I believe it was, prom, and uh, the deposit has been moved to next year. My understanding is that CentOS is canceling all of their May, June, and July events just across the board. Everything is canceled. They did contact um, the high school principal and said if we're interested we might be able to get an August date. At this time they have not given us that date because apparently there were a lot of graduations and other events that have been canceled and of course if we were to get an August date we'd like it in the first two weeks before students go off to college or leave town but we have not heard what that date would be so that's where we stand right now. And um, that's why I would like at our May meeting, if possible, at least read the names of all our scholarship recipients, all the schools that they've signed with, to at least acknowledge our graduating seniors because we just know this is devastating for them. Yes. All these activities that they are missing out on. So I figure it's the least we can do is read their names, put it in the Norwood Star, put it on the website, so at least they get recognition uh, for their hard work because we know the year just ended so abruptly for them. Maybe that we it's could a make a video of their pictures and here's the scholarship they got and have that cycle through. That would be lovely. I think that's what we have to do because there's, I don't know how else we can acknowledge them at this point. Mary, but the minute we get an August date, we'll let you know if we get an August date. So I have, a, I have several resources in the entertainment industry given my work with the circus. Um, I have some contacts that I would be interested in reaching out to at uh, Coney Island at Moonlight Gardens. Many years ago, Norwood has hosted its prom at Moonlight Gardens, but given the season, it was often a chilly evening. Um, we have been given a very unique opportunity to host a summer prom. And I think it would be absolutely wonderful if we could coordinate to have maybe a daytime graduation ceremony there at Moonlight Gardens, parents and families, 
kids could come in their prom dresses and tuxes, whatever we they would like to graduate in. We could do it for Norwood Day. Right. Mm -hmm. And then um, they could stay there Lovely. for dinner at, at the venue. Parents could go home and the kids could dance the night away under the stars. I think that I think would, it would be wonderful. Be, it'd be a really unique a way one. to celebrate both events without having to have multiple venues or multiple dates of availability. Um, it would also open up to several different dates of availability. We wouldn't have to necessarily just host on a Friday mm -hmm. or just host on a Saturday. Um, you know, we could we could coordinate it with our seniors and and see if that might be something we could do. Um, like I said, I've got, I've got several contacts in that arena. I would love to reach out to them and see if they'd be willing to work with our school uh, to create a really awesome day for our seniors. That would be so wonderful. I'd be happy to look into it. Thank least. you. <laughs> Because right now we're just really in idle because we haven't been given a new date and we've just, they've canceled all events for three yeah. months. So thank you. That gives us all hope. I was thinking if worse came to worse, we could do small batch ones just in the lawn here. So we'd be outside, not being well, each other's germs and do them in small batches so we can be spread out. Yeah, we could also utilize Shea Stadium if the Moonlight mm -hmm. Garden thing mm -hmm. doesn't yeah. work. Mm -hmm. Or do the graduation there and then move the party to Moonlight Gardens in the evening. But yeah. Whatever might coordinate most. We would be able to obviously accommodate more family members and guests if we held it at Shea. But yeah. we again don't know the restriction limitations that we might be having. But Moonlight yeah. is a very large venue and, and, and might be a very, uh, given the size of our graduating class, it would be a really perfect intimate setting for, for a nice party like that. That is a lovely venue. It is. So thank you so much. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> Anything else? Well, and I'm sure the seniors wouldn't mind too. I happen to know one pretty well, but <clears throat> but um, <laughs> you know I. I think they're just looking for anything at this point, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't want to rule out this gym. I wouldn't want to rule out the cafeteria. And yeah. I was on the committee last year that did the after prom. And we had a, I, I think it was set up really well. We had most of it here, but the kids were also in the lobby and in these hallways. And I mean, it was, it was a nice night. I mean, it, this is plenty of room for kids to move around. So what you're proposing sounds lovely, but you know, this is an idea too. Um, and this is right here. Many, many high schools have their proms and graduations in there. Yeah. Um, gyms and cafeterias i know mine was mm -hmm. and the only exactly. that i had a lot of fun we do you have a beautiful blue, auditorium yeah. right there i'm just saying well yeah and the only, <laughs> that's what i was you know kind of going to say because because yeah. the whole idea of shea and moonlight gardens just being outside scares me not only because of rain but because of heat um oh. and you know people can pass out and that sort of thing in the heat so you know i would also think of some of the larger churches um I don't, I don't know. Um, I'm blanking on the one over in Oakley, but Crossroads. Crossroads. But oh, I know, right. I know a lot of, um, you know, I know a lot of high schools, smaller high schools, graduated from places like that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, maybe we can consider those types of places also. I'm just trying to think of something that can get us indoors mm -hmm. and not, um, not subject to the weather. Mine was right in our gym. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Well, I don't think we should discount any idea. Yeah. I think everything should be on the table at this point. I, I just know, you know, from, from my son and, and talking with him and him talking with his friends and, you know, kind of conveying, I just, you know, these kids have had no closure. You know, March 13th, I believe, was their last day of school. And, mm -hmm. you know, they just have no closure. Um, you know, I know I was saying it too, you know, a April 6th, we're back to normal, we're back to normal, and we're not back to normal. And I don't know that we're gonna be back to normal, so. Um, I think that whatever we can do to help these kids, you know, have some closure. And, mm -hmm. and any of you that I've spoken with individually, you've heard me say, I'm not thinking with my head right now, I'm thinking with my heart because mm -hmm. I am so wrapped up in this, but I, I just feel strongly that we have to, we have to do something for these kids. So. Completely agree. Are yearbooks still being mailed in? Uh, for the end of the year, are they still processing those? I assume that they are. We have not heard that there's an issue with yearbooks, so I assume that all is going well. I'd like to follow up with that and just. But I will if check. It's something that we can even mail home. Just one thing that's a normal thing 
for a kid to have is their yearbook. Even if they have to come back next year, we could have a senior yearbook a day and have the seniors come back and everybody can kind of have a free for all for a minute in the gym, sign each other's yearbooks, you know, do it kind of an alumni night, so to speak, and, and let them experience that for a minute. That would be lovely. I know I was still getting emails from Life Touch even while we were off, like saying, make sure you order your yearbooks. So I would imagine that they were still, and I ordered my kids' yearbooks, so. Well, like they, that was and we'll, they'll probably send them here to the school too, so yeah. we'll have to coordinate for folks to come and pick them up during a lunch pickup or, a, you know, when they go to the elementaries for their packets or something like that. Well, we'll get, the, when the yearbooks come in, we'll definitely get them out to everyone. But I like what you're saying because the students are missing that signing of yeah. one another's yearbooks that we do have to get them back together at some point to do that. But an alumni night would be lovely. All right, and I do have one final question, just switching topics a little bit uh, before we end, if nobody else has anything else. Um, with regards to construction at Sharpsburg, since the new social distancing has been enacted, has, has, do we know, are they still on target? Is there a delay? What, what are, where are they at? I've not heard anything about a delay. Last time I checked was about two weeks ago and everything was going fine. So, yeah, they mentioned that they're socially distancing yeah. uh, their workers okay. because oftentimes, you know, the plumbers work separately from the electricians who right. work separately from the carpenters. So they didn't seem to think there'd be any delay. And um, depending on how long this closure goes, we might actually be able to start the construction at Norwood View even a bit earlier. Really? Okay. So that's a possibility also. Because everybody's already out of the building. Yes. Okay. So, so the sooner we get everything so moved out. With that question then, would that mean that modulars can come down sooner than planned and would that allow us to yes. save any money on the rental we of have, those facilities? Uh, we have, yes, exactly. We have boxes already in there and we're allowing the staff to trickle into their classrooms because they're in the building, you know, in their room by themselves to pack up and our plan is to have that packed up and start everything a month earlier, which would be wonderful with construction if you can get an extra month. Okay. So that's the plan. In fact, uh, Plains, I believe you approved tonight, so they're providing the boxes. Okay. So if those come out, will we be able to begin drop-off zone con construction? Or when was that supposed to start? Uh, at view? Uh, no, at no, at Sharpsburg. Sharpsburg. Like so we get rid get of the, the modulars, modulars out of the way. It'll be sometime over the summer, right? Right. So yeah. if they get those out of the way, would they be able to go ahead with the with the drop off zone construction at so. that building while construction continues across the street? Yeah. I would think so. I, I would be I mean I would be uncomfortable moving the modulars out before May fifteenth or whatever, but we could certainly have it all ready to get out. So, and then, and that then way have start our right away. construction lined up for the parking lot, yeah. Okay. Just because chances are we won't find out what the situation is in May until yeah. almost the end of April. Right. If, right. So it's hard yeah. to plan a month ahead because it's usually very last minute. Right, so as of right now, I mean, like if nothing changes, we're back in the building in May, right? Yes. Okay. But we don't, you know, but we yes. don't, but we don't know for We're sure. We're not sure. Right. But we probably won't know until the mid-April. Right. But you're right, we'll be ready to go. We'll be packed up and ready to go if that happens. So if for some reason we do end up staying in the building, you know, till June, let, let's say we have that extra month, would we then be able to hold graduation, like maybe like she said, inside, like in our auditorium and keep graduation on track? For May 18th, yes, if we're allowed to return, we would definitely do that. Okay. Now, the only problem is in our auditorium here, we'd probably have to limit it to two, you know, just probably two or three um, guests per student just because I think of the limitations of the auditorium, which is why we went to CentOS because you can have unlimited guests. Who's our cap and gown vendor? I mean, like, if, if they allow us back in the building, at the last minute, like say, we don't find out until May 1st that we're allowed to get back in the building on May 4th. And our graduation is May 18th, right? Yes. So, I mean, is our cap and gown vendor gonna be able to supply us within a two week time span? 
I, would I think believe it's all been ordered. It's already been scheduled. It's already been scheduled. Just they have not been delivered yet, yeah, but they have been, been ordered. and paid for. Yeah. But I actually was wondering that myself because I mean those invitations obviously have, or the announcements obviously have dates and locations on them. So I right. Yeah, the invitations are wrong. You're correct. Now, would we be able to even push back, you know, a week into June if we needed May to just finish up, you know, the education portion of what we're doing? Um, you know, can we push graduation up to the first week of June like if, it used to be? If, exactly. If we, we use our facilities, on that. we're open to any date. Mm -hmm. We could set any date we wanted. Okay. The but we might have to limit the number of guests because we can't. You know, CentOS is so big, you can bring 20 people as guests. Right. Or did you do a, a 9 o'clock session and an 11 o'clock session? I don't, when I was in college, it was all day long. There was constant graduations, and your graduation was at such and such a time. Well, yeah, but we're only we're talking about, like, what, 120 Yeah, we're, yes. we're not talking That's that all. many. But if kids. you broke it up into two, then you'd have more space. Yeah. Yeah. I think we can make it work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We will make it work when we get the word on what's Seems happening. We're allowed. Because yeah. we do want to honor our seniors. Uh, I guess along that line then, is there eighth grade graduation or anything like that, other ceremonies that were supposed to take place for the other buildings that we may also need to consider? Because I don't necessarily want to only focus on the seniors. Obviously, that's a very important piece, but you've also got kids leaving their buildings or you know those milestones for them as well and i don't want them to feel left out either so if there was any type of ceremony you know for them as well i would like to take the time to acknowledge that and, and plan for that as well and you know we've also had to cancel our fine arts of sunday which was also going to be the dedication of the auditorium for dr sabo so right now all of those events are on hold also Okay. Could we maybe push that back and host it in the fall? Like I think a fall date might be the safest. All right, anything else? I think that's the end of our agenda. May I have a motion to adjourn? I'll motion. We'll motion. Together. <laughs> you motion, I'll second. Okay. All right. Uh, call the roll. Mr. Atwood. Yes. Ms. Fallon. Yes. Mrs. Cole. Yes. Mrs. Raver? Yes. Mrs. Rerica? Yes. And we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone.